All right. All right. We should be live. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is gonna be a rough. This is gonna be a rough episode. Not gonna lie. It's not as jubilant as it was last time. <laughs> no, it's definitely not. But uh, and part of the noise is acid fire truck. But there you go. And that but, uh, yes. is the one and only AJ. So let's bring him on. There he is. I don't know how many fan cams we're going to have tonight. A lot of people are in, uh, down in the dumps, so we'll see. <laughs> yep. I mean, including <laughs> including moi. It's, uh, it's a match that uh, should not have played out that way for sure. But when you make 10 out of 11 changes from the weekend, I mean, you're basically asking for it. So, I mean, no excuses. But, uh, yeah, you know, you play a second string squad against a team that uh, pretty much didn't change and especially from Steven Glass who you know knows us pretty well I would say and um, yeah you know he's definitely got a, uh, a bone to pick to a degree that he he wants to prove that hey we made a bad decision not keeping him as a head coach so I mean, Plus just have, just like half their roster yeah. are like Atlanta United, you know, people who either didn't make it or were there for a little bit, and they have a chip on their shoulder. I mean, Jason Longshore was telling, you know, in his preview of the match, like half the, the, the team seems to have some kind of, like, revenge story in the back of their head. Oh, exactly. Philip Godrum, uh, yeah, he scores against us in the penalty. Uh, you have Laurent Kisidou, who, uh, you know, came up through our academy. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's just like number after number of guys that have played in our side. Yeah, Luis Fernando, who looks right. really, really good for them. I mean, uh, yeah. Like I a, mean, no one looked that... particularly bad for them. They just had a solid squad. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had a, a game plan to execute. The only thing that they really suffered on generally was their finishing. Um, if that if yeah. that was a better team, if, they're, if they had clinical finishing, that would have been like 3-4-0. So... Uh, it could have been worse. Yeah, 29 shots at least through uh, 117, 118 minutes and 10 on target. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's really interesting. Yeah. Like that, that should not be happening uh, to an MLS side from yeah. a USL side. So uh, and, Memphis had 53.6% yeah. uh, possession. Yeah, 29 to 11 shots. Only? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, 10 shots were on goal for Memphis and only two for Atlanta. Yeah, that's absolutely ridiculous. And, uh, yeah, we looked just bereft of ideas. I mean, we don't have the connectivity between the lines when we do not have Tiago Almada. And, I mean, for you, did it make sense for him to sit on the bench for any of the extra time? I mean, yes, so he is coming back from injury, but... Do you agree with the uh, the move? It's basically punting U.S. Open Cup. Yeah, uh, I mean, I agree with it. It, it depends on how you want to, you know, weigh the importance of this. Um, in one way, you're letting the fans down, you're letting the institution down, and the badge down because what the badge represents, what the institution represents, what the fans expect, is you to play for all the cups, all the trophies, all the silverware. Clearly, we're not doing that. The data sands are kind of tied in that. I understand. It's not exactly his fault. He can't, you know, make you know gold out of nothing. But, like, this is just not it. I, I don't know how you can field your backup team and have it get completely demolished by a USL team. Like, right. yeah. And this is the thing. Honestly, we were winning with the, uh, the USL side if we you know, go with that. And then we brought on our guys, and then we conceded two goals. So, you know, we brought on the first team, essentially. And, yes, uh, it is much more disjointed when, you know, they're not in game speed, but you would still expect much better from these players that are starting week in and week out for Atlanta United. Yeah, just like Ibarra. I mean, just like last game. A colossal yeah. mistake led to a Shiboko goal, or, a, you know, opportunity. And in this one, mm -hmm. Parada comes on. I mean, what what is... What is that about? People just, I mean, yeah, they say game speed. I'm like, that's not game speed to me that when you make a rash, clumsy challenge like you've been huffing it for 90 minutes and you're completely gassed, 
and you just He's you fresh. just came on. Like, yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> like, I mean, I love Parata. Don't get me wrong, but what was that? Yeah, it's it's this even. It's not even like it was a super dangerous. Uh, yes, it was in the box, and yes, if he was able to turn, absolutely, it would have been dangerous. But where he was going, like the ball came in. Okay, yeah, you could push him to the byline. You could push him out wide. Like, there was no need to go to ground. And, yeah, I mean, it's it shows that, okay, yeah, uh, you know, Parata is, uh, you know, as good as he is in the box for goals for us on attack and generally is pretty, uh, pretty reliable. I think it's still a stark difference than Miles Robinson. And, you know, it's apparent, like, if... And when Miles Robinson goes, we need a very, very good center back because Barata, he's fine. Luis Abram, ooh, I don't know. <laughs> Tonight, yeah, I, I think he looked okay. Yeah, like he, uh, there were some some nervy moments uh, defending from him, in my opinion. What do you think of his uh, his performance? Uh not very good. There was also one time I saw he went. Like, there was a, a header he was trying to get his head on. Uh, well, he didn't try. That's the point. Like, it, it came over to him. I'm guessing I, thought, I just cut out. Dude. <laughs> oh, I can hear you. You're fine still. Um, so, uh, yeah, you're probably trying to fix that. Um, but, yeah, it there was a time where I just saw him trying to do something and it didn't work. Like, uh, you know, tried to get his head on a ball when there was a ball coming over. And he just completely buffed it. Um like he didn't even try to get up for it. He didn't even try and jump. Didn't do anything. I don't know if he just didn't have the confidence as an own, in his own bunnies, but he just didn't even try. Um, and this kind of goes to a bigger point that I want to make about the entirety of the game, almost the entirety. Once, no, yeah, just since the penalty. Once the penalty happened, you could see there was a lack of leadership on the field. Practically mm-hmm. everyone started dropping their heads. Every I saw so much walking off the ball. Like, a lot of ball watching. Just a lot of um, guys out there looking for someone to inject some energy into them to, you know, g- do the Yakamakis, grab them by the scruff and be like, let's let's get out there. Like uh, Yako mm-hmm. did with uh, Ibar after, uh, you know, the game on, in, with Chicago. So, we clearly, I mean, obviously, at that point, we had literally no one on the field <laughs> that, like, is, like, of leadership quality it, uh, once... We were at that part of the match, and it showed so much. This they weren't up for it. No one was up for it. No one was making. The, even the announcer was like, "These guys, Memphis is on, like coming back to back from like traveling all over the United States, ex- very tired." Jason Longshore put them on a prediction of probably tiring out and gassing out by late first half and then late second half. They didn't. They were outpacing us. They were beating us to second balls all over the pitch the entirety of the game, even to the very end, which is like, what is happening? They, they, <laughs> right, they still look like they were, uh, like we were susceptible until the 120th minute. Like we, we basically, uh, yeah, we could not get a foothold into this match uh, after our goal. I mean, the goal, really good, really well taken by Tyler Wolf. Congrats on his first goal. Yep. Other than that, the team looked very poor. And your your point on leadership, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's one of those where, you know, Brooks Lennon has mentioned about you know wanting the badge or wanting the not the badge but the uh, the uh, captain's armband, and it's one of those like, what uh, <laughs> what did you bring? Unfortunately, Lennon, like that was not something that. Uh, I saw leadership wise that he was able to do when he came on the pitch. Uh, you know, any of the other players as well that came on. I mean, Etienne, uh, he was, you know, trying to make some things happen. Uh, Andrew Gutman trying to make some things happen. But, you know, still at times they look, yeah, just a little off pace a little bit. Or they're, you know, just not quite up to game speed, even though. Yeah, like that shouldn't be the case. I mean, Etienne more so. Gutman just came in last match, so we can probably forgive him, give him a little bit. But 
I mean, <laughs> if anything, Clement Jop, he kept us in the match. Yeah. For sure. Like, no doubt about it. He had at least six massive saves that, I mean, of those 10 that were on target, I mean, it's just like, this guy, uh, when he <laughs> when he kind of went down holding his hand, the glove oh, yeah. came off. It, it was hard in mouth because it's just like, oh, yeah. no. Like, this is a, a spinal tap moment here where we just keep losing our drummer. And... <laughs> We just can't. Uh, I don't know if you know that reference, but yes, I um, Yeah. Okay. Good. 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 But man, it is. Uh, yeah. We we need to <laughs> we need to keep a keeper here at some point. And, uh, I was like, dang, we got Reyes called up, um, just in time, I guess. Like, how many times has this happened to us? Like, we we've had to go to our fourth keeper a lot before. It's wild. <laughs> Yeah, there's a oh. a terrible yeah. error around goalkeepers at Atlanta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, you know, massive kudos to uh, Clement Jopp. He, he will feel uh, aggrieved probably a little bit. Uh, he's like, I showed up, boys. What about you guys? Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, I think, you know, he'll carry that confidence probably into the weekend. So that will be good at least. And, what you do know, you think he, stopped, he starts or, over Q? I think so. I mean, I think, uh, you know, he's a, in terms of Westberg, he's probably still reeling from the injury. I don't think he risked him. Diop has uh, definitely played well enough to, yeah, get that start, I would say. A lot of people are saying, uh, like, he should have been the number two, if not the number one mm -hmm. on Twitter. I was just (laughs) seeing, and I'm like, uh, you know, after seeing what Diop's made of, there's a bit of a shout for that. Maybe we see yeah. how far this goes throughout the season. Right. I, I'm not. I'm not fully convinced. On yeah. His you need more data. Yeah. But yeah. But uh. But saves wise, his reactions fantastic. Like that's you really can't ask for. Like there was the kick save, the uh, the one that he you know pushed over the bar that like oh yeah. man like from distance as well. That was not a not an easy one. Um, if any of those people I mean, from Twitter are here right now, just remember, this was against a USL team as well. So keep that in mind. He did very well against exactly. them. This may not translate. Exactly. And, yeah, he did pretty well against uh, the fire when he came on. So, I mean, okay, you know, but it's uh, it's one of those, yes, absolutely. Let's take that with a grain of salt. Yeah. But, um, but it is, yeah. I mean, like, Memphis, they get a scalp here, and I think that's what – uh, I rue a lot here is, you know, like a lot of this, you get the, uh, you know, you get the shit talking from fans and uh, especially opposing fans and they got a scalp and we are a side that are embarrassed and I don't like it. I don't like <laughs> it one bit. I mean, like we'd rather be the team that, you know, upsets versus being a cup set. And right. we're probably one of the biggest scalps of this first uh, you know round for a lot of the MLS sides. Yeah, San Jose went down as well um, to their USL yeah. opposition. Uh, Miami I think almost did, but I don't know where that I don't know where that finished up. Maybe someone in the chat can link that to me. Right. And it, it's that it's just like but I don't think uh, you know San Jose is in third in their division. So it's definitely one of those, uh, or conference, but whatever. All right, um, so Miami went, inner Miami went through, but on penalties. Oof. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're, uh, they're not looking good either to a lot of degrees, uh, with their place in the league. Uh, I think winless in their last six yeah. or seven or something like that, apparently. But they absolutely um, did demolish, uh, Miami FC in stats, like 19 shots mm. to five, 75% possession, and 500 plus more passes than the other team. So they were dancing wow. around them like crazy. <laughs> Unlike for us, where not only we lost, but we got outplayed too. Absolutely. Like off the park, the 53% uh, pass, uh, or not pass, but 53% possession, possession yeah. is staggering. Like that. 
that doesn't make sense actually because uh, you know they had definitely more meaningful possession. I think that's what it was. Yeah. Because we uh, we were passing around back, we just yeah, we just couldn't connect the lines. Like the the balls over the top were the ones that uh, really could do anything about it, and yeah, we we just didn't like garner enough good enough looks. Like Gooman got the ball into Etienne late, and he couldn't turn. It was just like. They, yeah, what was that about? I mean, they MTN also looked uh, frozen, like he's never you know, been in that position they before. Definitely crowded up that box really, really well. Rather, it's, you know, it's just like one of these uh, these matches where, okay, can we put it behind us? I mean, we keep conceding late. <laughs> yeah, I think we <laughs> this absolutely is not can. Something that's like a one-off. We yeah. do this nearly every match, and especially with that Tiago Almada, and. You know, I think uh, for me, if you're looking for that energy, you're looking for that player that brings uh, something different into the match and takes the game by the scruff of the neck, it's Thiago Amada, and he should have been brought on, uh, whether he was injured or not, uh, you know, previously or you know, just sitting out for fitness reasons. I think you're trying to win this game. Like you, you can't, <laughs> you cannot be embarrassed by a USL side. Like if you. Like we we could accept it last year when it was not. Whoop. Let's see if he comes. Oh, there he comes back. You know, Nashville. Like we we played <laughs> that that match was like a pretty, if I recall, a pretty even match against Nashville. But, um, but this yeah this was not, and I think yeah, looking on to. The weekend, I mean, we have a lot that we need to work on, and not a lot of days to, to do it. Yeah, I mean, it's like going back from what you were saying. I think that I think we can put it behind us to a degree because while you know, if we're gonna put out this type of lineup in another game because of the, the situation calls for it, like we have injuries or what have you, or another international break or. You know, or we do leagues cup and we try and trot this time, type of thing out again. We're get, we can expect this result. We know our depth is completely inept, and that's just what we just have to take that pill and swallow it. Our first team, the our starters, they can do damage. They can be in the you know the top six if we if we play really good. Um, so I think like you know we have that to look forward to. So it's if we it really depends. Like if we have the ability to keep putting out our desired ideal first line, then. I don't think we have. We can put this game behind us. We can move on. It's the times when we can't, though, that you can really pretty much expect this. This is this is just what it's going to be going forward if we have to use these these uh, this lineup. Right, and I think that's the thing. It's like okay, so you know, Gonzalo Pineda, you know, the plaudits. Does he deserve the plaudits when we play well, or does he deserve the plaudits? when he can make our second string side look competent. Uh, I don't know. I mean, for me I think this is like this this is on the players. I just like clearly they are implementing whatever system or whatever they're being able to do with the first team cuz you can see it and it looks good. Um, granted they also have world quality players starting in those lineups to make it work. But these players just not only are not executing you can see that they stop playing like that's yeah. on them this they had plenty of game to play and they just put their heads down they stopped going after second balls the commentator even had to say it during the game that wow look at Atlanta not going after second balls having Memphis with tired legs beat them to everything that tells you everything you need to know about this squad so i think it's also that though you know the coach has Bears' responsibility of being able to motivate his team. And, you know, if he's not able to get them up for a cup competition, then, you know, <laughs> what else is he going to be able to get them up for? Like, it's a knock on competition. Like, you should be able to be, get up for it alone. Right. Yeah. Know? That's what I was thinking, Knowing too. That. Just so <laughs> surprised how, like, lackadaisical they are about approaching games like this. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you pretty much concede 
the match when you change 10 of 11 players. I mean, let, let's just be honest. Like, <laughs> you do this uh, in the Premier League, it's going to be, yeah, it's probably not going to be pretty either. You know, uh, you, you do this in lower leagues, it's going to be pretty ugly as well. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's one of these where, uh, you know, one of these players that uh, we've started, you know, recently and whatnot, Miguel Berry. Yeah, um, you know, he, he mentioned in the, the press conference uh, oh, between yeah. the matches that, you know what, it's game state and, you know, uh, I'm working hard and, you know, uh, yeah, he's backing himself, which is good. But did you see anything in this match that made you think any differently? About, no, he, he kept saying you know, how, oh, well, I just didn't get a big, you know, I didn't do a lot of production because we were always chasing the game or we were trying to hold the lead. You know, and that, and it's like, like you shouldn't be trying to hold a lead against Memphis, but we were, right. and we failed. You should be trying to right. bury them, like get right. see what I did there. Uh yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> but it's also, man was invisible. Like, I, there were like maybe a couple times that he uh, he held possession for us a little bit. And yes, we are so, looking at the comments. By the way, I will be reading the comments yeah. in a few minutes. Yes. Yeah. Please keep them coming. Uh, we'll definitely answer as many as we can, if not all of them. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, Miguel Berry just uh, leaving so much to be desired. I just I don't know what he brings. Like it's like does, his his uh you know his ball striking. I haven't seen it. I just where is it? <laughs> like it's not it's not there. His uh. You know, um, his target forward play, also not there. Uh, he doesn't have pace. Not like, fast. I, I don't want to keep ragging on him, but it's just like, I mean, yes, he's he's working hard. I give him that. But, like, <laughs> you can work hard all you want, but yeah, yeah. Like, you know, none of the players on the pitch can find you with anything. <laughs> yeah. Like, he's just not in the box. Like, he's not... Uh, he's not a poacher. He's not a target forward. What is he? <laughs> he's just a, he's a, mediocre a guy player. running out on the pitch. That's what he is. Yeah. Right. And like, that's what if, he was built to be, and even... that's you know what he's given. And, I mean, like he's right. he's the type of player who would thrive in kind of ideal conditions. And we just don't have that, and he's going to struggle. Yeah. And is, uh, yeah, is he a USL player? He probably is at, at most. <laughs> so it's... I don't know. I don't see it. Uh, yeah, I mean, even so, we moved on Jackson Conway uh, with an option to buy for you know for Phoenix, and it's I'd much rather have Jackson Conway right now. I mean, even as limited as uh, his game can be a little bit, yeah, yeah. I'd much rather have a guy with promise and uh, <laughs> you know who will fight for the badge. I mean. But, um, yeah, let's let's read these comments, man. All right. So we got A. Austin saying, absolutely pathetic. <laughs> uh, and then he uses some choice wordage after that about um, our gameplay, which I won't repeat, but I agree with. Uh, Kareem says, side-eye with this result. Yeah. John Payne says, John R. Payne says, A, you got everything they deserved. The FO should be ashamed and nothing will change. Absolutely pathetic from the players, coaches, in the front office, Almada should have played at least three last ten minutes. <clears throat> yeah, I think we covered a I little agree. bit of that. Um, this result is kind of question questioning our depth of the team. Yeah, no, I think it's more than questioning it. I think it's condemning uh, yeah, the depth it's, of it's our team. It's just not there. Yeah, exactly. Or lack yeah, there. That's a great word. Because, yeah, it's it's basically not there. Like we uh, we have probably 13, 14 players. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, like so one of the better, comments yeah. are, we should blame the ref. Um, what are your thoughts on how the ref <laughs> did this game? I think he, I think he got him right pretty much. Uh, there wasn't really anything that bothered me too hard. A lot of people on Twitter Honestly. were saying the penalty was soft. Um, I still think it was a penalty. So. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's a penalty. I think, uh, like he doesn't get ball he goes to ground uh, unnecessarily as yeah. well and takes out his man like i don't know what else you 
like yes he he didn't like clatter him but it's like yeah he got him and yeah. you can't do that like it's just ugh. and uh beyond that i mean the calls really i mean nothing really too egregious like it was a pretty decently called match i mean were there like some like okay uh you know uh some yellows that were like okay was it called for both sides like tyler wolf uh, he got called for a yellow, and then there was another one called on, like a foul called for Memphis that, eh, you know, a little yeah. harder foul than ours. Didn't but that's to be yellow. expected in any yeah. game, you know, ebb and flow in, in terms of uh, call calls being called. Um, and right. I, it, Atlanta did take have a lot of fouls. They did get a lot of yellow cards too. So that's kind of interesting. Oh, yeah kind of a bit of like is that desperation defending on our part or are we just so out of sorts that we had to constantly make you know reckless challenges like that's another kind of thing that was indicative of our uh, completely disconnected gameplay exactly it was yeah a lot of cynical fouls uh I and mean, quite a few from um, you know Luis Abram as well as Tyler Wolf like I'm I'm surprised yeah Tyler Wolf actually made it as long in the match yeah Uh, because yeah like he's he's definitely fighting for us but it's definitely also yeah there were some (laughs) some challenges that it was like oh (laughs) just uh just call it down there son yeah uh, stay on the pitch like it'll be okay it'll be okay sometimes it's one of those it's like yes those tactical fouls yes really good but sometimes it's better to keep 11 men on the pitch than get somebody set off arguably so. most almost every time <laughs> almost every um, time yeah. yeah exactly so atl but. rain <laughs> says uh the supporters were calling out almada to come on but it didn't happen that's true and we talked about that a little bit the game was craving more quality from atlanta and we had it on the bench and we didn't use it so that's on pineda um i think maybe uh eli says i think maybe because they didn't use almada at all s- suggest that they're selling him um, or that he already has an agreement, they couldn't risk an injury, or Pimeda is just a joke. I think those are kind of, that's kind of a bit of a false dichotomy. I don't think it is either one or the other. Um, I think that it is, they, I think most likely scenario is that they're just worried that that uh, Almada has a slightly more serious injury than that they're letting on. Um, because I don't think that they're going to tell the world, oh, our star player is has a slightly worse injury than you know we originally had thought um so i think that they're being extraordinarily cautious with him because not only is this guy winning you games this is your cash cow this is your like what the financial department of Atlanta united is going to see as the w at the end of the season regardless of trophies so like they're gonna keep this guy healthy no matter what it doesn't have doesn't matter of whether or not they have a trade in the wings at the moment um which i don't think they do I think it's way too early for anyone to have any kind of serious offer put in. Um, you need to wait and hear way more offers as they come in. You can't. You don't just take the first offer that comes. Like you probably are, are um, inferring the Napoli conversation. And I mean, exactly. that's just interest. That's just hearsay. Um, it's way too early for any team seriously to come in and you know? to, like, yeah, do it's, that. It's April. So, like, these uh, these transfers don't happen until usually June, July, uh, sometimes in August, of course. And so that's the thing. It's like, yeah, we will field offers until our MLS transfer window is done, in which case it is done. It was Monday, and it was it's over, right? So we're not moving somebody uh, in the middle of our season as well as, you know, where there's only a month and a half left, if for most of the other leagues, like, it just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, like it's nonsensical. I and think if he keeps there. playing well, and we there do well are, this season. He's his yes, ratings uh, only going to go up. Precautions that uh, you know the team has made. I don't think it's with that in tow. I think it's more fitness, and you know, like you were saying, not letting the world know if uh, there's a bigger injury, which. Yeah, I mean, this might tip off a little bit of that, but hopefully, yeah. I mean, it seems like it's day-to-day, and hopefully it is just that, and not 
Barco did it in. So next question is ATL Reigns also says, I missed the 2019 Atlanta United. Since that year, they won it. Yep. Uh, we all miss those uh, those good old times when we were out there competing for trophies still. Um, hope we get better in the League's Cup versus Inter-Miami and Cruz Azul. Well, if we trot out this team again, like I said, it's going to go the same way. Probably way worse, especially against Cruz Azul. Um, <laughs> on a, I mean, Miami, for what it's worth, they still got by their USL team. So, you know, it is mm-hmm. what it is. Um, Bruno says, why... Why do we have such bad luck with backup strikers? I don't know if it's so much the luck. It's just, you know, we, we kind of buy what we get. You know, we get what we buy. Um, we kind of expected him to perform like this. And like I said earlier, he's the kind of guy where he needs to be in an ideal situation to thrive. And that's 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 most people. That's most strikers. Um, because most people are not a, you know, a world beater or like someone at the level who could score goals consistently in europe like yorgos so you know in mls you get a striker like that he needs to have a very solid team behind him in order for a miguel barry to or like a you know um uh kai kamara or whatever to just be lighting it up the league so um and let's let's see like the actual like our best backup striker that we've had brandon vasquez uh yeah we let him go for nothing so. And he he catapulted us through the Open Cup. Exactly, you know. And so, uh, how useful would he be right now? Right. Yeah. But that's what it is. Bruno also says, "I'm going to give tons of props to Memphis. They came to play and keep the pressure, even when they were uh, up on the score. Rujo had like two players on him at all times. Yeah, they definitely double booked him, and that's fine. That's to be expected. He's our designated player. They all they don't even need to watch tape to know what to do with him." Um, and unfortunately, he's an easy player to bottle um, because he will <laughs> run into you and lose the ball. So he can kind of, he's done that at least like two or three times this game. And it's very frustrating to watch him do it again. And it's annoying because you think, oh, well, you know, yeah, sometimes he has that trouble against MLS defenses. And, you know, they're better than I guess people give them credit for. And then he also has trouble against USL defenses doing the same kind of thing. So. That's really worrying. That's really worrying. Yeah, he's uh, he's an open space type of player. He's which, who thinks he's not? Uh, who thinks he can operate in yeah, short exactly. spaces? Which is Jesus. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it is that. I mean, like you know, get him on a counter attack. I, yeah, I, I will definitely uh, bank on you know him at least getting a shot on target. Uh, but yeah, against park defenses. Just ain't it, you know. Yeah. Like, or you know, against uh, tight marking, it ain't it. Yeah, um, and going back to his the same question um, from Bruno. Yeah, give props to Memphis completely. They played a very good game. Apart from you know their finishing, they could have finished more and better. Um, they had a lot of really good chances. You know, a, a much better team with those types of chances would put away three, four goals. So, um, they, uh, you know, but their midfield ex- was incredibly good. Their energy, incredibly good. They seem to not be lacking any kind of leadership. Um, their tactics seemed pretty good and fine. Um, I didn't really see like a real big flaw in, in, in anything except for, you know, their finishing. So, and that's, you know, you just keep pouring it and pouring it and pouring it on. Eventually you get one, and in this case, too. And so that's, that's the, you know, the end of the story right there. Like, 20, what was it, 29 shots? I mean, you're going to get a couple eventually. You can't allow that many. It's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. That, that gives me flashbacks to, uh, say, like Unai Emery and Soul times, mm-hmm. where we're just letting teams pepper our goal. And, you know, uh, we also were doing this uh, probably – Early on in Gonzalo Pineda's, uh, you know, tenure, so it is something that, yeah, we, 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 <laughs> when we don't have the, uh, the first choice eleven, this is this is what happens. It's another team. Like we, it's just another team. It's it it's, it's a like, hollow shell of its former self. Exactly, it's unrecognizable, and yeah, um, yeah especially without the spine. And that's that's the main thing. You know, no Yakumakis, 
no Almada, no Miles Robinson, and of course no Brad Guzzi. The whole spine. It's basically it's we're we're a, a facade. We are just heaps of meat and organs without the skeleton. Did you think not having like so so set to? Do you think that had anything to do with it? Uh, I mean, we've seen Sadich and Abara uh, win for us as well. You know, being our midfield. I don't think it was the midfield tonight. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, there was a little bit of interconnectivity issues, uh, a little bit of disjointedness for sure. But I think the main bit is that you know we throughout the eleven. We weren't connecting passes well enough. And we also just look really bereft of ideas in the final third. Like they're just like we, we literally we get there and nothing happens. Or we can't even get into the box to, you know, get a, a shot off. We had <laughs> two shots on target. Like that's <laughs> that's ridiculously poor against yeah. the USL side. Yeah. Um, so let's see. Um, Bruno also says, uh, Abram played good defense, but horrible long passes. He's not a long pass defender. Yeah. I mean, luckily we typically have Miles Robinson and Prots getting better at it. Um, so, which is kind of sad because like Abram's supposed to be this kind of cerebral defender and you'd hope that he can really link up play later down or further down the field but you know it is what it is maybe he'll get better who knows maybe this isn't anywhere close to his max potential i mean he comes from fairly good pedigree so we'll see we'll see how it pans out for him yeah because it was uh you know la liga two so there is that uh where you know we'll we'll see what level that actually is and before that Uh, it was i think cruz azul too yeah and so no, it's a it's a good question of like what is his level truly? We will find out. Yep. Um, Uzumaki says uh, Pineda, Barry, Fortune, Etienne, Arujo, Stock all down. Diop, Stock up. Uh, yep. Yeah, for for the most part, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, I I, th- I think Etienne put his heart on his sleeve and did his best, but I don't think he was very sharp tonight. I think he is another one of those players who kind of got down in the dumps, mentally got to him with too many mistakes. Um, He's a fast guy, but he just got beat to the ball quite a bit with, you know, specifically the man who was covering him, um, which, you know, you, you kind of hope those long balls, those leading passes, Etienne would then go on and then break defenses down and force them to really spread out for cutbacks or other things like that. But he didn't see that tonight. Unfortunately, Etienne just wasn't, the, the ball placement for him wasn't there and his speed wasn't there. And, then, you know, again, yeah. Memphis props the defender for covering him very well. And it's also that. It's like, he needs somebody to combine. There's pretty much, okay, yeah, you have Andrew Cooper. Uh, I mean, it was only a couple but he was a lot. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's like, he's still getting his match on his back. But then, in the middle of the park, you need someone to combine with there. No one's really there. I mean, yeah, it's pretty much like, uh, we didn't really throw men into attack. Either. We just kind of, we just kind of were drifting. Yeah. Kind of were there, <laughs> you know, like just standing around or like yes, a lot of ball watching. Yeah, no okay. impetus, no tenacity, no energy. Right, exactly. Like the work rate on and off the ball left so much to be desired. Just it, mm. I mean, let's let's call it what it is. It was shit. Yeah, yeah. Cover your little one's ears. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Strunk says Atlanta was unbelievably passive. Players seemed indifferent and passionless. Gave Memphis the initiative all game long. They, that was literally thrown. The game was literally thrown. Yeah, completely agree. I think we just kind of came converged on that same idea you just had. Uh, Bruno says Fortune, Wolf, Barry were as useful as the cones they use for training. Yes, uh, I mean, they kind of all three of those are in my estimation, USL players more than MLS players. So um, that's kind of what you expect. But this right. USL team we played against developed. was better. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, and that's the thing. It's like, dude, these guys are developing. Yeah. The guys that uh, were playing for Memphis, they are, whether they played for us 
back then or not, they are more of a finished brand. And so, yeah, you know, Laurent Kissidou looks like a really good player, right? <laughs> uh, Luis Fernando looks like a pretty good player, right? Like, you know, they they definitely were making a lot of things happen and a lot of, you know, dynamism play. Like, I, yeah, I'll, I'll take a couple of those guys uh, for a bench right now. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> yeah. I, got, I have to stipulate, and Jason Longstreet constantly reminds everyone of this, that the twos are a very much a developmental program. They aren't necessarily being trotted out there to win silverware. And so what you have is them, a bunch of like 18-year-olds running around, getting beat up by, for the most part, grown-ass men in USL, one and two. So like... Memphis, these are, like AJ just said, they're more closer to a finished product because these are, let's not forget, USL is a professional league. These guys are professionals. Like, the the guys on R2s and the guys that came up, like Fortune, um, you know, all the whole rest, like, these guys are barely getting into that world. And so it's representative in the league when they used to play in USL. Now it's MLS Next. Like, they got beat up then, too. And they're getting beat up now again. But because, again, these teams, like the MLS teams and the USL teams, are professionals. And they've been doing it for a long time. So they have that advantage on them. Right. We, we should still beat them. It's an important thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. But it's an important thing. It's like when people, when players are fighting for their livelihoods, oh, well, it's a different animal. Like, you bet. They're going to uh, tackle harder. They're going to run harder. They're going to train harder. They're gonna, you know, it's, it's basically, it's not, it's not like teenagers that are posting on potential. Like they are, they're needing to feed their families. So. Yeah. All right. Next question. Um, Connor says, I think this game actually could be a blessing slash a statement that the team needs to work in the summer to compete for a cup. Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, like it's. If they if they are able to consistently put out the first team, they will be able to compete for a cup. I believe it in my heart of hearts. They will get, um, you know, far in the playoffs if they can consistently put out their their favorable team. If not, you're gonna see this type of result. Um, he also says the issue of our backup striker situation is we don't buy a player who is versatile and can take over the striker position for a couple of matches. Um, yeah, I mean, it's that's what a backup kind of is in some degree. I mean, we were spoiled in previous years that we had some decent backup strikers. Maybe we didn't know, like, we had them, Brandon Vasquez. So, you know, it is it is what it is. Now we're kind of seeing what a lot of MLS teams have been dealing with for many years and why a lot of times they don't do well. They don't do well in uh, depth, um, like, com- like competitions that demand depth. And we can kind of see that why. We're running into the same iceberg, per se. So, like, it's how do you get around that in a salary cap league? It's really hard. So, uh, hopefully, though, now that we have Lagerway, he can figure that out and steer the ship. Because, you know what? Seattle's done it. So, maybe we can do it, too. And that's the thing, too, is, like, uh, yeah, Seattle, they, they bring in versatile players. Uh, you know, and so uh, they are able to withstand that for most years. Um you know, and what we did uh, the first year uh, when Joseph Martinez went down for you know a couple months or something like that, we brought in, uh, or not brought in, but we moved over Tito Mushalba to uh, a striker position. And, you know, he was able to at least hold down the fort for, you know, Joseph Martinez. And, you know, you, you have that depth as, as well with Cameron Jones, with... Um, you know, Brandon Vasquez in the in the uh, kind of academy position, I guess, in that sense, uh, waiting in the wings. And so it's it's one of those like, yeah, you you had that depth, um, but it also came with you know the injection of Tam that when you're an inaugural side, you can afford all of that. And mm-hmm. it's to your point, you know, MLS salary structure. That's the difficulty is how do you sustain it year after year. And yeah, I mean, it's it's that it's like Chol maybe is that kind of guy that uh, could do something for us like that. Um, you know, he's kind of shown he's got some ability there. I think we were pontificating on uh, 
uh, Sunday whether he should be starting. You know, he should be starting in this match. He didn't. I argue he shouldn't. Hmm. Um, sh- let's see. Strong also says, this performance shows very serious issues with the team. It's not a one-time thing. Luck was on the side of Atlanta tonight, as Memphis had a lot of real chances, and they could they really had trouble finishing. Yep, we kind of covered that. That's very true. Uh, ATL's Rain also says, should Pineda look for improvements for Saturday against Nashville? I, <laughs> in literally every department. Down the pitch. Yeah, in every such department. If there isn't improvements, I mean, there's something is very wrong um, if we look like this with our starting lineup. Because, you know, I'm pretty sure Yako and Almada, Miles, they're going to be back. So, And I, hopefully Diop can be there. That would be cool um, to see him in another MLS match. So um, it'll be interesting I, it, it, if they if they do not. If they look like this with those players, you can pretty much throw out what I said earlier about us having like a good chance into the playoffs. So, yeah, if they all start, I think yeah, it looks vastly different, as well as Sosa in the middle as well. Um, you know, we'll we'll see. Uh, it will it will be interesting. I, I think uh, you know since uh, there likely will not be an episode for the match on. Saturday, uh, yeah, I mean, we should preview it a little bit. So, you know, against Nashville, you know, they're, uh, <laughs> they also played tonight as well. And, I mean, I don't know the, the score line. I, I imagine they went through. I'll but, take a look. Um, yeah. But it's a side that, yeah, I mean, have played us tough. And especially. They won you know, 1-0 against San Antonio. Hmm. So they did the business. And yeah, at Geodas Park, uh, you know, this weekend, it's gonna be it's gonna be a wonder. Like, who uh, who actually is fit enough to play, and who will play? I think the biggest question probably will be, who's starting at left wing? I mean, you know, is it Etienne Junior? Is it Wiley? We'll find out. Uh, who do you think? Is I just need to. One second. Is Lars Wyke on Nashville right now? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, he yeah. just he played for them tonight. I wow, I haven't seen that name in a long time. Oh, right. Wow. Yeah. All right. Lars so, Wyke, sorry. What was and your also question? Also, Josh Bauer. <laughs> yeah. Josh Bauer, like two uh, two guys that uh, used to be part of our, uh, you know, at least Atlanta United two uh, center back four. Uh, yeah. So basically, the biggest question I think in terms of positional. Uh, battles going into Nashville is probably a left wing because everybody else probably picks themselves except for defensive midfielder and um, our box to box midfielder. But you know, Wiley or Etienne Jr. Who gets the nod for you? I think Wiley. Um, I, I don't think Etienne showed enough tonight. Um, I think Wiley has the the speed and the energy to force a back line to really have to be up on their game because Almada will find that pass if you're not careful. Etienne has not proved to me yet that he's as capable of doing that. Um, I, I got to imagine he is, but I just need to be able to see it a couple times first before I can reliably put Etienne in that position over Wiley. But right now, Wiley seems to be the hot ticket. Um, you know, he, he didn't have the best game in Chicago or with Chicago, but like, I I like... My internet cut out, so I have no idea what you said. But It's okay. I'm <laughs> almost done. Um, yeah, so I'll pick Wiley. You'll pick Wiley. Yeah, yeah. I think it makes sense too. Because, uh, yeah, on the counterattack, which is probably what we'll need to at least uh, be able to hit them with. Uh, yeah, he's definitely shown to be a lot more dangerous this season. So, yeah, you know, those uh, those balls from Thiago Almada or Luis Araujo, they'll find him. And... Right. <laughs> he keeps walking close to his internet and then away from his internet. And so it tries to attach to one and then disconnect as he's walking away. Um, let me read one of the comments. Was he coming back? There we go. Ah, there you are. But yeah, um, 
so yeah, I agree with you. Wiley should probably get the nod. Um, and then, yeah, it's that defensive midfielder uh, battle. You know, is it Sosa? Is it Ibarra? I, I would put Sosa in after. I mean, like, I like like I like that they put Ibarra today because it shows that, yeah, you had a huge gaffe last game, but we still believe in you, and it's all right. Just get, get right back on that horse. I think after you make a mistake, the best thing you can do, send him right back out again to try and erase it and put it in the dustbin of history as quick as possible. So... Hopefully, that's kind of what happens. But that being said, I think Sosa can still get a, a look that day. So we'll yeah. see. I, it's probably Sosa, uh, and I agree, because uh, everything you just said. And I think it's this, too, though. He just played 120 minutes, uh, Abara. So uh, right. yeah, yeah. he probably is not going to start <laughs> uh, three days later. So uh, it's probably him, um, and it's probably Jose, too. And... Um, yeah, I think that's the thing too. It's like, uh, is Hosetu and Sosa is that dynamic? Uh, you know, I think good enough. Like, is it athletic enough? Like, are they dynamic enough? I yeah, don't know. That's the question. Uh, yeah, that's a <laughs> tough one. That's a real tough one. Uh, I don't think we know yet. Yeah, and uh, but I, I think we've seen in yesteryear. It's like it probably isn't enough because uh, yeah, we've seen them play together in you know at least 2021 2022 yeah i mean it's like okay yes they're they're still growing into it. like at least sosa is mateus is said to i think he's he's pretty much what he is at this point i'm yeah. not sure he's going to be improving massively but um you know defensive midfielders they they age uh a lot better they uh, they gain a lot more experience and they can play a lot longer but yeah. Um, but yeah, I and mean, so it, it's one of these like okay, you know, we can field a pretty much uh, first choice starting eleven if uh, Yakimaka is uh, able to come back. And I don't think Miles Robinson was left out for injury reasons. I think he was just rested. Um, and Almada, yeah, is he going to be healthy enough to uh, to actually play? He better yeah, be we, after not gotta, using him tonight. Exactly. Like we, we, we have to pretty much like fingers cross all of this and uh, yeah, just hope for a, uh, a much, much different performance and hopefully a much better result mm-hmm. on the road at a tough place. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. All right. Um, so I guess that kind of concludes the Nashville preview. Uh, let me finish off yeah. with some of these questions. Um, <laughs> well, I guess we, well, before we do that, I mean, sure. I guess we could predict that that score line, and maybe we could get to it at the end or something. I think it's going to be yeah. favorably speaking. I think it's a draw. Um, I want it to be one one or two two, but we'll see. I'll say one one. I, I I think we're going to be a lot more defensively stout, and I think Nashville. I mean, I think Nashville is good for a goal when you have Hani Mukhtar on the field. So I think that they will at least score one, and they may tease for two. So my range would be like, you know, one one to two two, and then anywhere in between two one one two. Mm. So yeah, one one is my uh, is my guess. What is yours? If you can still hear me. All right, he's gonna figure that out while I read. Uh, and I'm back. Yeah. Oh, okay. So okay. yeah, I don't mine know, was. I don't one, know what one. you said. One one. Got yeah. you. Uh, yeah. That that favorably. Yes, is the last word I heard you say. Because that would be fantastic score one. This this match. Uh, so, yeah, I think I think there are more goals in it though. But it could I be. think it's also a draw. Yeah. I think it's a. I think it's a two two. Yeah, it, it definitely could be that too. Um. Like I said, Hani Mukhtar is at least good for one. So you know there's that's coming. Um, and, you know, depends how Nashville's feeling for their second one. I don't think it's a route either way. Um, I w- that would super surprise me. Um, right. I don't think it's a no- nil-nil. That would also surprise me. So, you know. <laughs> if, I mean, at this if, point, yeah, Yorgo's got to score. Yorgo's got to score. Exactly He's right. got to score. Exactly. It's uh, it'd be six and six. It'd be you know, it'd be tying Tyler Twelman or Taylor Twelman. So 
Yeah. If he, uh, say, say that three times fast. Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Tying Taylor Twelman. Tying Taylor Twelman. I already know I can't do it, so I'm not going to do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's see. Oh, yeah. This is a funny comment. Bruno says, I think we could buy Memphis's entire midfield with what we pay Arujo in a month. That may be accurate. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And they produce way more than. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Than he did, even though he got the assist. But uh, beyond that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Uh, Connor says this performance from the attack reminds me of the first time or the first game of the season where the attackers look to not know what to do with one another. Yeah, I mean, it's it's it wasn't just the attackers; it was it was the entirety of the team. It was disjointed. Yeah. Um, they look like strangers. Yeah. Which, to be fair, some of them kind of are in a way, um, but still, yeah. it still shouldn't be shouldn't be like that. Um, yeah. Strong says, worst case scenario, you get as much more competent B team. Um, do we know when Giamakis is going to be back? Um, he sh- I mean, he should be back for next game. Um, unless, you know, again, it things have made me think perhaps the FO is being a little bit more secretive with how serious some of these quote-unquote knocks have been with Yakamakis and Almada. Hopefully they are as they say, and they're no big deal, and they'll be back ASAP, literally this weekend. Um, but it, it's, I mean, it's possible there could be something a little bit deeper there, so we'll see. Yeah, and on that, I mean, it might be where, uh, yeah, you, you punt the road game, which uh, you've seen MLS sides do. So it's just, you know, you... Uh, keep a player out one extra game than necessary. And, you know, especially uh, Yakumakis has had a couple scares injury wise. Uh, yeah. And unfortunately, it might be smart. It might be smart to do. Yeah. We'll see. You know, kind of just. Um, Bruno asks I feel that from our backups, Hall of Fame, I would put Dom Dwyer on top and then Vasquez as a close number one. After that, just a bunch of I don't remember their backup names. Um, you don't remember? You don't Adam remember John. Adam John the Shusher? You don't remember him? How can you forget Adam John? <laughs> or, uh, well, he's not really else, even a backup. He was just the starting striker for a long time. <laughs> yeah, he had to because uh, yeah. yeah, boy, you know, Joseph Martinez went dark, down. dark days. Yeah. Man, that, that that's what's crazy. Like even just reflecting on that, twenty twenty was so dark in so many ways. <laughs> Sheesh, like yeah. that's that's just insane how uh, how much has happened. But anyway, yeah. Moving on, <laughs> um, I think Hosetu and Sosa is a bad mix. Either Ibarra and Hosetu, or Ibarra and Sajik, uh, or Sosa and Sajik. Um what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, uh, I think um, I think Ibarra and Sadich are fine together. Um, there's enough dynamism, I think, in that, um, and they're pretty hardworking on both sides of the ball. Uh, Sosa is not the best man marker, um, but he's a good deep lying playmaker. Uh, Hosetu is tidy with the ball. Uh, a liability probably defensively and both of them essentially <laughs> you know together Hosetu and Sosa it's like yeah you're you're pretty much uh you're you're not hoping for yeah you're hoping for possession yeah you're not uh <laughs> you're not uh I think playing really defensive and smart um tight compact ball uh but um and then you know, I think Sadich and uh, Hosetu have played together before. Uh, I mean, Sadich has the the most back defensive midfielder. I don't know. Yeah, that's that's not the wisest. But if you're going a little bit more attacking, maybe. Um, yeah, I think you you gotta you gotta hope Ozzy Alonso comes back soon and kind of rubs off some of his experience yeah. into uh, Sosa and Abara so that. Yeah, there's, you know, when when in, in, inevitably he leaves uh, after this year, it's at least they've been imparted some wisdom. Yeah. Um, I, I have a question for you. Um, 
and for the chat to think about. Last two games, and Jason Longshore kind of brought this up in one of his um, um, post-mortems of the Chicago game. It seemed like we got dispossessed quite a bit. They were We were forced. We did a lot of unforced and forced turnovers in both games, this game and the previous one. Um, and he speculated that perhaps, I mean, this is, they don't think, he didn't think that this is a replicable thing, that like teams can now see the tape on how to beat Atlanta United, um, but that Chicago figured out how to disrupt us in a really meaningful way. Um, and Memphis, I mean, they gave us a lot of turn. They made us turn over a lot as well. Um, is this a systemic issue? You know, where are these turnovers all of a sudden? Like, it seems like we can't hold on to the ball. And, like, for the last two games. Like, at all anymore. It's like, what is that about? Uh, yeah, 100% it's systemic. And it's, uh, is it just lately? No, no. I think it's when you don't have the quality players in this side, um, you know, fully. Like, you essentially, it's that it's the positional play that will make us successful or not. If the players don't know where they need to be in order to uh, receive the ball, to uh, be in which half space so that you know, you're know you lined up for the best success, if you don't, then yeah, you're going to be all over the shop and you don't know where guys are to be able to pass them. So then at that point, yeah, you're just blind, blindly passing. And at that point... That's that's a recipe for what you, we see is really poor turnovers, and you know basically guys having to pretty much hit and hope and hope that somebody's there. Boy, we saw a lot of that, that today. Play. Yeah, it's basically like yeah, you, you're like playing it down blind alleys, or playing it down like you know areas that you know like wait. What were they looking for? <laughs> you know, but that's the thing is like they're just trying to, you know, not get dispossessed themselves, but then they turn it over because there's no one else to play it to because no one else is close enough to them. Or in a uh, uh, space or half space that is close enough that they can play a one two or that they can uh you know, bring a guy into space so that they can run into, you know, uh from behind or uh, at least run. Yeah, it's that. It's like some of the uh, some of the play like is a little too vertical at times as well, uh, which is totally fine uh, most of the time. But yeah, we can play a little horizontally as well. Like something that Barco used to do really, really well was he used to keep our possession by just running horizontally, <laughs> so that yeah, it's like okay, you drag a defender. And, you know, sometimes it was very effective, especially when he was really, really good for us uh, in 2021. Yeah. There's other ways besides the route one. That's for sure. Um, yeah. So let's see. What else has we got here? ADL Rain says, might be 2-2 versus Nashville. Yeah, I think that is a, definitely a fair possibility. Um, Walker Zimmerman was the reason Atlanta United went downhill in 2020. Uh, because of the yeah the hit against Joseph right that was who hit him yeah yeah um, I believe so yeah I think so yeah um, Bruno says we should try the red string method that Ten Lasso is using I think that'll help uh, with the turnovers maybe I mean at this point I'm willing to try anything <laughs> uh, I'm not caught up so I have no idea what that reference is about but uh, I will. I will catch up. Gotta get caught up. It's man. It's uh. The, see, the show just keeps getting better and better. Especially the Zava okay. inclusion. That was wonderful. Yeah, that was. I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> it's 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 not to give you spoilers, so I won't. But yeah, it's it's funny. It's a funny inclusion of a new character. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So that's for all the. Uh, we have all the comments read. If you have any more questions for us, hit us up in the chat. Um, we'll read them before we depart. Um, so that basically does it for us here. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more housekeeping with 
Um, so if you guys are regular fans of watching the show, you know on these streams we do a wheel. We're not going to do one this week because we have one built up ready for Mark already on the weekend. Um, but we will be returning to your regularly scheduled wheel programming next on this weekend. Um, and what else is there? Um, yeah, so we're going to be doing a stream this weekend. And I believe for the most part you can ex- – well, I was going to expect – you can you you. I was gonna say you could expect us to have open cup matches for you going forward, but I'm gonna change that to league cup whenever that starts in the summer. Yeah. <laughs> at least, uh, at least there will be less fixture congestion, I suppose. So. Silver lining. Silver lining, I guess. But um, but yeah, and also, uh, yeah, if you haven't already, you know, share this uh this video, help us out. It, uh, you know, every little bit really does uh, assist us. Awesome. Thank you very much. So one last question is Brian Mullet says, I think this all just means nobody in the organization from leadership to coaches to players don't care about the U.S. Open. It's like, I mean, you have to understand, you know, they are working with, with congestion, with fixture congestion. So they have to, you have to rotate. Every MLS team is rotating. No one is putting out their starting line. It just so happens Atlanta's start their B team is atrocious. That's the thing that needs to be worked on. The thing, like you know, if you want to prioritize, uh, like basically every team prioritizes the league first. Um, only recently have teams started prioritizing CCL when that happens for them, but for the most part, they punted those as well. They've most teams punt these competitions, and they will. They'll be like, well, if we can get a foothold in the Open Cup, win a match or two against the USLs or whatever with our B teams, then we will start throwing our A team into those because it's a we have a legit chance at that point. But they just don't have the buy-in to perhaps make themselves a liability for MLS League games um, if they sense that they may not be winning these these early Open Cup games. So, like, I, I the calculus is there. It makes sense if you think about it. Like, you know, the, the worst case scenario would be for them to put, like, a close to first team in the U.S. Open Cup early rounds, get knocked out or lose, and they then have to play an MLS Cup, and then they lose that as well. But more likely, they'll have won that Open Cup game and then go on to lose their MLS game because they have to rotate that one now. Or else they'll get injured. Almost likely they'll get injured. So, like, it's a, it's a tough calculus, but it's one coach is making every league around the world, and I think it's the right one. For the most part, it's just, like I said, most teams have a better B team they can trot out that they can realistically expect to compete with. Ours just isn't there. Yeah, and it's also this, too. Uh, you know, you'd also expect, uh, you know, a lot of these uh, MLS teams to actually be able to field their starting 11 for three matches a week sometimes. I mean, it's one of those, like, the best teams will have to do it. Uh, the best teams need to do it, and uh, you know it's like minimal. It's like you you rotate maybe two or three players, and you know then you still have a really st- strong starting eleven that can you know do enough, and then you could take them off. So that that's what was perplexing a little bit. Is like okay, well you know ten of eleven is a lot. If we did five or six out of eleven. Like maybe it'd be a different story tonight, but yeah, it is. Whew. It it was an, an a night of uh, of horrors. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I mean I called it on Twitter too. Not no one wanted yeah. to believe me, but I called it. I was like, this is a nervy match, and I'm not gonna like the result of this. But I thought for a minute we may have had you know the game tamed when that opening goal. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. okay, maybe like you know we can see some. Maybe Memphis isn't as hot as everyone's saying they are, and then for that for ninety five minutes, you probably thought. <laughs> yeah, I'm, well, I mean, it's not even that. I mean, it didn't take long for me to see that Memphis was bossing the midfield, and it's only a matter of time then because that gave them so many chances. It's where it all came from. So, like, I saw that happening. I'm like, okay, they're gonna get a lot of chances. We're gonna have to score a couple if we're gonna stay in this. And we just did it.
Brian Mullet says, mad disrespect starting a nearly second string game or second string against a second division team who clearly came to play, opened the potential for something bad. And then everyone but the goalkeeper played like they didn't want to. Yeah. I mean, it's like I said, it's you can call it disrespect. I call it calculus in that they're prioritizing the league game. So it is what it is. Um, they didn't want to do buy-in until they can sneak a win in in early stages of Open Cup, and then they would start playing better players the further into the tournament you get. But it just didn't happen. So, I mean, basically every MLS team does this. You can look around the league. No one is starting their preferred 11 in the o- early rounds of the Open Cup. It's just not going to happen. Uh, Bruno wants to know what are three changes you would have made different that Pineda didn't do tonight well I think we mentioned one about uh, late subs you didn't inject any real attacking threats into the game um, and the game was absolutely crying out for that um, you had Almada on the bench so that could have been something um, I mean I don't I need to actually take a look I think at sure. who was on the bench yeah, I think Shaw should have started. I think that's that's what should have happened. Um, as a ten, you know, I think. Well, no, no, no. As as a striker. As a striker. And okay. um, yeah, and I think yeah, you know, the Wiley at left back that was fine. Um, Araujo, I mean that was, that was fine in terms of you know that as well. Tyler Wolf, that made sense. Um, you know, the midfield pretty much made sense. To a degree, um, because you're kind of, uh, you know, you pretty much know what the starting eleven is probably going to be on them on Saturday in midfield anyway. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's it's that it's like who's our tent? Like a Johnny Fortune, essentially. Like I don't know, like that. <laughs> like it, it's too tall of a task, I think. Like, uh, yeah. It's, we, it just shows like we we need somebody that can at least deputize in the ten position. Otherwise, we do not look free. I'm surprised Arujo isn't sometimes put in that case, in that position. He is literally wearing the number ten. He is. This is true. But who's his backup uh, at right wing? It's Brooks yeah. Lennon, and he's yeah. the starting right back. <laughs> So it's it's one of those like you could yeah you could, you, you could try and force Hernandez into the right back and then book books landing on the wing, but yeah. I mean we, we saw Hernandez have a pretty despicable game tonight, so yeah it, it wasn't great but he I think he did enough like defensively but uh, he was he was he was definitely one I, I caught ball watching and walking a lot which is is yeah. is uh, is a little bit peculiar to me because in other games I've watched him play. He's usually one with a lot of energy. He was running around a lot. Yeah. So I don't know what was going yeah. on with him today. I don't know. It was the whole, not the whole team, but it was a majority of the team that was just not yeah. here for it. Right. And I, I, I get it in extra time. He's trying to preserve his life a little bit because we don't have that many uh, subs. Uh, so, okay, there. But throughout the match, yeah, no. Yeah, agreed. His, yeah. his work rate, a lot to be desired. So I think that's about right. it for questions and yeah. the game. Um, do you have anything else you wanted to add before we go and you can sign us off? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, you know, as quickly as we can forget this match, we shall, we will, and hopefully the Memphis fans uh, don't come us too hard. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, if you, uh, if you guys, yeah, you know, Go follow Mike on Twitter. I think you'll see his uh, fantastic takes. So uh, the, let everybody my, know. My where to accurately you. predicting the outcome of this match takes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but follow him at nw underscore atl utd fan tv. And um, yeah, guys, thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe. Ivan AJ, that's Michael, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks.